Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to my live stream here on Twitch and leechess.org. International Master Panda with us tonight. No, I'm just I'm just a regular Panda, guys. Um, just happen to be into chess. Not that many of us around, you know, animals that can play chess. But I'm here helping William with his chess stream. So good luck, everyone. Please submit some interesting games to analyze and support the stream. And don't forget to play H4. Welcome, everybody, to our subscriber stream. It's Thursday night. So, everybody, welcome to our stream. Hopefully, everything runs smoothly here in the... Uh, in the stream on the chess and twitch welcome let's see who's here starting a couple minutes late sorry about that but we have a very busy schedule welcome everyone so please submit games subscriber subscriber games please submit directly via Lee chess will wolf long time no see will wolf Usually our subscriber stream is, um, we've got zero viewers. That doesn't seem right. Let me refresh. Can't have zero viewers if two people are already commenting on the chat. Something seems weird about that. Merle Dixon with uh, 321 bit donation. Thanks Merle for subscribing and for supporting the stream. I just click refresh chat. So I hope everything is okay there with the with the uh, with the stream. For some reason, it's not showing me on on OBS how many viewers we actually have. Let me check over on Twitch. Twitch is not. Twitch doing weird stuff again today. Twitch is not showing me viewers as well. Is it me? Does does it seem okay? The stream is okay on Twitch. My computer has been on all day. I hope it's not doing crazy things because it's, it's tired of me. Um, but I can't see how many viewers we have at the moment. It's obviously more than zero because we've got several several people in the chat. Mel, uh, not Mel Blank, but um, Dixon donated 321 bits. want to thank him for that. We've got 11 viewers. Okay, that's, that's coming up now. I can see. So we are live. Um, there may be some lag, but I wasn't getting the lag... I wasn't noticing the lag on Lee Chess. It says 11 viewers now. It took a while for this to load. It seems a little slow. It seems a little bit slow, but I think we're gonna be all right. Let's see if we can get Ponda, yeah. Can we just verify that we're up and live and running? Because it seems like we're a little bit, we're a little bit laggy in the stream today. I'm a bit concerned about it. All right, it's lagging a few seconds. It seems like there's a bit, a bit of lag. I agree. Um, maybe we do need to, we do need to beg the, the viewers for a new computer. This one seems to be getting overrun by, by the, uh, the, the Streamlabs OBS. It's too, too labor intensive, for my computer. I think there's just some settings maybe I can fix though. Hello, JCS. Welcome, Merle Dixon. Thanks again for the donation. Merle leading the way for the week on our stream here. Um, we're going to do game analysis today. I've only got two submissions so far, um, and that means Astrobate and Merle Dixon. By this stage of, of the week on Thursday, I usually have four or five people submitting games. So that's weird. It shows seven viewers on, on Steam Labs OBS. It's really slow there to pick up what's going on. Um, but anyway, let's get started without further ado. Astrobate and Merle Dixon submitted games. Let me check my lag here. It looks really good on Lee Chess. It's like a very clean 80 ping for, for me. Um, just purely the OBS program. It's causing issues now going up to 134. That's still not out of control. Okay, let's start with the game analysis here. Maybe we won't run. We won't run, run the, the engine to try to not overwhelm our our system here. Okay, we've got Astrobate submitted a game full of daring do and a reasonably good engine score for me. Cool. Something interesting. It's it's a uh, Nimzovich defense. 
by the very odd order of moves. It's actually a Reprintsev variation. That's cool. Alexander Reprintsev from the Ural Mountains, an international master from Russia. He lived in Washington, D.C. for a while. He used to play this variation. Actually, normally knight c3, queen, queen a5, then, then we'd have knight c6 coming up next. Let's take a look. So this is Acerbate versus Casimiro Ahadres. Okay, Acerbate, let's check this out. I don't know, I've got a little bit of lag indeed. Okay, so Acerbate is white. I either have vanity games or games where I, I easily understand my mistakes, says JCS. But you could always just submit like an interesting game that wasn't played by you. You know, you could submit any game. I mean, a game between other players or something, if you like. So, yeah, the Scandinavian I like, it forces an open position, basically. I think the best thing about it, I used to play it against Mule Skinner, one of our regulars, because he liked to play the closed Sicilian. And I think this is one of the only ways to not get bogged down in a closed position. Um, so I can understand Queen takes d5 being the, the best move here. I believe that it's better than knight f6. I think I can go on, on paper, concretely, arguing that. Uh, interesting engine line there. Knight f6, d4, knight takes d5, knight f3, e6. Okay, queen takes d5, and Astrobate doesn't play knight c3. Now, there are basically three schools of thought here. Knight c3, knight f3, or d4. And I know that... Uh, Knight f3 has seen a lot of uh, a lot of popularity in recent times. D4 is considered to be like uh, inferior, but okay. Twitches don't know about the tactical aspect. I need to probably tweak the settings to Shark. I'm sure that a good part of the problem is on my end. I'm I'm a little laggy here. Queen takes d5. I was fine before I started the Streamlabs OBS, but that it's like a more intensive version of OBS. It seems like to suck up a lot of resources from my computer. It was okay before that. Um, d4. This is not a bad move, but blacks can eat. Black can basically equalize. Um, knight c6, I guess, and then knight f3 and e5 is the recommended variation. So very strangely here, Acerbate's computer analysis says knight c6 dubious. Now, as far as I know where I come from, that's not the case. So, Acerbe probably analyzed it with like a tablet or some kind of not so strong engine, because I think knight c6 is probably black's best move. Um, guys, if you'd like to analyze a game, have me analyze a game together, um, please submit some games, because I've only got Acerbe and Merle Dixon thus far. Knight c6, I believe, is the best move, so this is questionable analysis here. Um, Knight c6, and then white played bishop, Aster Bay played bishop e3. Knights before bishops, my friend. Now this should transpose to another opening. No? After like knight f3, e5. Knight f3, e5. There's even a Karpov game, and I, I recall. I'm not sure. I thought I recalled there being a Karpov game. After knight f3, e5. This, this is probably best play for both sides. Let's see, Leko Bakro. 2014. Sorry to move the board around on you guys. I moved my screen by accident. So there it is. This game I'll never quite understand. Like Fernandez Garcia Jose. Um, who is Fernandez Garcia Jose? By the way, against Anatoly Karpov. I have a friend Jose Gonzalez Garcia, but. Not Fernandez Garcia. I don't understand what that game was. Is it like a Karpov simultaneous or something? But if it was simultaneous, then who was a 2452 playing Karpov? I don't know what the story is, how Karpov came to play this position. Can this come out of E4, E5 somehow? Could Karpov have played the Nimzovich defense? I'll never quite understand. Um, Alright, but anyway, I think that's the best, the best play for both sides in this continuation. Yes, it's possible to play e5 as well. I don't know where the, th the theory stands on that business. That's another line, looks like. 
You could transpose with knight f3, knight c6 now. We could also take... Then you have to decide, do you trade queens or take the pawn on e5? This ending is, is looking pretty comfortable, though. Let me stop my engine to see if that speeds up things for my end. Um, if I turn this off for a moment. Okay, queen takes d1, king takes d1. I think this is, this is perfectly okay for black. Probably the most solid option for black. But let's see what happens. So knight c6 and Asbe played bishop e3. It's hard to imagine that move could be bad for white, really. It's technically supposed to be knights before bishops. But the dubious might be a little a little drastic. E5 played universally by everybody in this position. Guys, welcome to my stream. The pond is here with me. This is our subscriber stream, guys. So, all the subscribers are welcome to submit games. Hey, guys. If we get through all the subscribers, and we still have time, uh, we might take, like, a non-subscriber game. But I don't promise anything, all right? We don't make promises. We, we, we take them, okay? I don't know. That doesn't even make sense. But it sounded cool. Anyway, we don't make promises. We take them. So e5, yeah, everybody played e5 except for Aster Bates opponent, who decided to play knight f6. I think what you have to realize when you're black here, you know, because I'm objectively analyzing this for both sides. I know Aster Bates is white, but when you see this pawn on d4, the whole point is why does white have an advantage? Because he has a central pawn and black doesn't. The idea is that you destroy said central pawn. And by playing knight, f5, knight f6 here, knight f5, Knight f6, he's not doing the job he needs to do, which is undermine his pawn on d4. If that pawn is able to remain, and, you know, we're going to have problems now. I mean, c4 might already be a problem. In other words, c4, queen a5, check, knight c3, and we're almost just ready to roll with d5. And that's what Astrobate does. Bang, bang. For lack of a better move, queen a5, check, knight c3, and now we're going to bust through with, like, d5 with tempo. Looks pretty good. I'm thinking that already white sort of got away with something, and it's not clear where that bishop's going to come out on the diagonal, f5, g4. They're both kind of artificial. So it looks like, again, the e5 is an attempt. What is black going to do, though, after e5, d5? This wasn't played. This is analysis. e5, d5, and now there's a suggestion here in this line to play knight d4, sack a pawn. I think it's interesting. But I would consider taking the pawn, at least. Bishop takes d4, e takes d4, queen takes d4. And presumably black has compensation for the sacrificed pawn. I don't know where this bishop is going. But I've got um, Ponda. Ponda motifs here. We've got to answer you guys with some Pondas. I'd really like to restart my computer, to be perfectly honest. But we don't have time for that. Where's my Ponda? All right. There's my Ponda. Yeah, I think this is a good pawn sacrifice. Black probably has enough compensation based on the on the powerful bishops. Both bishops looking really good for black there. So that's a valid line. Instead, he plays bishop g4. It's not a move that really accomplishes anything. You could simply play f3 here, acerbate. I think that's a little bit weakening, but conserving time, which is probably probably good. Although bishop e2 is all also fine. Bishop e2. And then white, you know, I would assume black would exchange pieces here. Instead he plays bishop f5. Move 11 knows, he might know a bit about this line. Move 11, have you played d4 before now? I'm trying to remember. I know that, you know, you've played, what, knight f3? Have you played d4? Yeah, knight f6 doesn't contribute to undermining white's central pawn on d4. I mean, that's the definitive thing. That strikes me. But but bishop f5 is very similar to like my game with... It reminds me of my game with with uh, Take Back yesterday in our in our Wednesday stream, our weird Wednesday stream. He did something like bishop g4 and then bishop f5 unprovoked, which basically loses time. I mean, it looks like black's playing for some kind of knight, knight b4 tricks with knight c2. Um, so I don't know. I don't understand black here being behind in development and, and like taking time to play bishop f5. 
I've got crazy, crazy lag going on, guys. Um, Nada 3 just developing a piece. You can't argue with that. And then black should castle queenside. I mean, it's obviously tempting to play knight to b4. You could even play knight e4. I think in the, in the event of knight e4, probably just sack a pawn. Like, why even be materialistic? This would be great, you know. If black dares to take this pawn, he's just lost. He's lost, probably. Total control of the position would be lost. Um, black is no development here. He's in very bad shape, so... I don't know, another idea to go here for this cheapo on c2. It's a little more troubling because in this variation, if we play rook c1, wait for it. Knight takes a2 could be like legitimate. This bothers me a bit. I don't like the look of this. Now we have to play like rook a1, knight takes c3, rook takes a5, knight takes d1 in, in white's position. Okay, maybe. All right, we have this at the end of the day. Kind of a funny variation. Is this even correct? At the end of the day, we're down a pawn, so not not too not too good actually. Um. So in any case, let's take another look here at uh, at this possibility of playing knight before. I mean, it looks creepy though. I think we just we just castle. Um, just castle for white. It should be. It should be fine to allow knight c2, no big deal, mbd. Here rook c1, give it up, give up the dark square, sorry. Castles this variation, rook c1. Sorry, castles here, rook c1. Man, I got crazy lag. It's not really even showing up, like Lee Chess isn't even detecting the level of lag that I'm getting here. Seems like I have insane lag. It's more like five, it feels like it's about 500. Literally no streamers do commentary on major tournaments. Well, I mean, the thing that you have to, to realize, Bob, um, just to stop the analysis for a minute, to address Bob's comment uh, about streamers doing commentary, I mean, I had a friend, that we, we, we created uh, chesslecture.com together, and, and he had the, we had a very brief period where we tried to do live commentary um, years ago, going back f 13 years ago. We, we had a thing where we were doing live commentary, and... Uh, it's like very labor intensive, time intensive. I mean, it takes a lot of time to do live coverage of tournaments because the games are long games mostly, something like the Olympiad or something like that. So you literally have to have like six hours, seven hour streams um, to properly cover it. And that's a lot of time commitment. It's not like a two or three hour stream we could throw out there. Um, I think you had a very serious business model to make something like that work. Not like a casual streamer can afford to spend like six or seven hours, you know, commentating all the games from the Olympiad. I mean, that's that's a really big project. I'd love to do something like that again. Like, I used to work for ICC and do, like, long commentaries of, of serious major tournaments. But that's a lot of work. Uh, casual streamers just can't touch that. I don't see unless you're financially independent, have nothing better to do. Um, but the, it's a great thing, though. It would be great to have, like, really legitimate coverage of, of some good tournaments. I'm sure you can do it in two hours, just at any point. Well, I mean, you know, I think a lot of people want to settle down and see the whole game, honestly. But, I mean, it would people would still like it, sure. But, point taken. Um, so, I'm, I'm curious if we can throw in the engine here for a second. Yeah, so white's better. Like, say, knight takes e3, f takes e3. Our development advantage is very significant here. White, white should be seriously better. Um, maybe do a highlight or something. Yeah, this is this is more realistic kind of highlight videos, you know. Hard to do a highlight live stream, I think. Easier to do it in like a save video format. Okay, Astrobate, let's see what happens. So the guy played B6. And you gotta ask yourself, you're like ancient aliens, right? What are we thinking when we played b6 in this position? That's literally a mouse slip. I mean, this guy was reaching to castle queenside when his hand came down on the mouse and he hit the b7 square by accident and played b6. I mean, that's literally the only explanation for black playing b6 in this position. Like, there is no explanation. Double question mark, bad move. Asterby doesn't even care, he just castles. He's like, good, I'm out of here. 
And now Black Castle Queenside, because he was trying to castle Queenside. Um, it's just that there's so many weaknesses because of the inclusion of, of Castle's Queenside. Shut off this engine here. It's really sucking up the, the resources. I swear I think it was a mouse slip, man, B6. So if he castles Queenside, as he should, um... Why wouldn't it let me do that? It's not his turn. It's not letting me cast the queen side. There you go. I mean, this feels like a Portuguese gambit type position. It actually doesn't seem like it should be that bad. And he actually has tactics in some variations with e5 or knight takes d4. Maybe not knight takes d4, but it should be almost playable for black. Mr. Coffee, what's up? As far as I'm concerned, b6 was definitely a mouse slip. Um, so anyway, let's see what happens. So castles, castles, and then a3, a very slow but useful move by Astrobate. You know, <clears throat> I mean, you might, from some dimension, you might think that like he played b6 on purpose to give his queen. I mean, I had this idea. A beginner might do that, you know, play, play literally b6 to give his queen retreat squares. But, you know, you have to realize how significantly this weakens the Black King. It's way worse, you know, it's way worse than, let's say it a different way. You're going from the frying pan into the, in the proverbial fire here. The weaknesses that you created to give your queen retreat squares are far worse than the original <laughs> problem of, like, maybe getting your queen kind of trapped. This is a disaster. Black is just lost. He plays queen a6. And now b4, I mean, you have so many good moves with white, it's just ridiculous. Um, b4 looks really good. That would really take away all the squares. Literally threatening, like, c5 and b5. This looks terrible. Um, maybe I have more experience than, than Sarah Wan and Ashley at this point. I mean, I've done so much analysis, like, between live streaming, working at ICC, doing hundreds and hundreds of videos for chesslecture.com. I mean, how much video material have Maurice Ashley and, and Yasser actually produced? Or how much, you know, commentary time? It's like flying an airplane, in other words. I mean, I'm not claiming I'm a better player, of course, than Yasser Sarawan, but I might be a better commentator because I literally have more, more um, flight time, let's say, if we compared it to... If we compared it to uh, to flying an airplane, we have more flight time than, than Yasser in terms of commentary. But uh, anyway, Yasser is great. I don't want to get into a comparison. Um, Knight a5. So yeah, this is this is a catastrophe in Hungarian. Catastrophe. Now the knight is sidelined. The queen is sidelined. The black king is not safe. White just playing with c5, one of many good moves. Another good move here is knight to e5, highlighting a, yet another weakness in the black position, f7, which is enough to do him in. Probably like straight up, I mean, that move is like a knockout. He can play bishop g6, but the strength is your attack. I mean, this is totally over for black after knight e5. The c5 is equally good, though it doesn't increase white's uh, build up really. Queen b7. Now I like b4. Although, do we have a problem here? Maybe we have a problem. We have an actual problem. Knight takes d5 is a literal threat. So you have to play c6 to uh, to choke in the queen. And then um, there's also additional threats of bishop a6 coming. Yasser is at his best when he's telling stories. He's very charming. Um, I've seen him firsthand telling stories. Yeah. c takes b6. This was a weird decision. It looks like c6 just stifles black completely. He literally would have to play queen a8 now, only move. And then on bishop a6 check, well, after queen a8, I mean, he might be threatening to play knight takes c6 with your queen on d1. So you can reinforce again with like knight, knight e5 probably, and then prepare to win a piece with b4. This is very good for white. It's overwhelming. Um, let's see how my lag is doing here. We've also got a couple of new submissions. Just 
it feels like the lag is a lot worse than it is. Um, I'm seeing a 123 ping for myself, but my screen just, uh, my screen just moves very slowly. I've got Funny Animator Jim. Yeah, he'll be held as a reserve because he's not a subscriber. You're a reserve. It's like Laszlo, Nodge Laszlo for first Saturday tournaments. He has these so-called reserve players. People who never ever like contacted him in their life. He puts them on this imaginary list of people who are going to play in the tournament. Reserve players. All right. Bob, Bobby Sakamano is next after Merle Dixon. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. And move 11. All right. A lot of our regulars. Devoted. Our most devoted people are here today. Usually the screen, the screen, the stream is a lot less populated. Not as many viewers on subscriber days, but uh, I'm willing to sacrifice the number of viewers to increase the quality of the analysis. Queen is dead. Black is dead here. But anyway. B4 is a blunder that allows knight take c6 and black to stay alive. This was the game. And then he doesn't see it. You know, obviously, it's a very scary position even even with the blunder. Um, sorry? This is a subscriber stream, Animator Jim, for people who subscribe to the channel. They're the ones who, who I do game analysis for, not like random people who don't subscribe. Um, I never really do non-subscriber game analysis, so it doesn't matter if you submitted your game an hour ago or three days ago. Um, Knight takes c6 here would save black and keep him in the game, but he missed, uh, he missed this. Instead, Aster Bay plays c takes b6, c takes b6. Why would black play c takes b6 rather than a takes b6? Taking toward the center, keeping the c file kind of covered up. That's a very strange decision now. b4, um, knight b3, and just dropping a piece. Now it's over. This should be over, but let's play through the rest of the moves. Now knight takes d5. This move is apparently a question mark, but I mean, it looks like what else are you going to do? I mean, you get a chance to take this pawn. Probably this is the best. Oh, I thought you were talking about you submitted the game. Sorry, Animator Jim. Knight takes d5. Uh, knight takes d5. Rook takes d5. Bishop a6. That's a nice shot. Nice move, Acerbate. Beautiful tactic. Like an overloading the queen idea here. Very cool. So this was a good game with a few inaccuracies by Acerbate. Um, I've got really, really bad lag, guys. I mean, I'm strongly, strongly inclined to, strongly inclined to like turn off the computer and restart it, but it would really delay us like 15 minutes. So let's let's see if we can suck it up. Actually, it's it's the broadcast is coming through okay. But when I try to move the pieces and stuff, it's really slow. It's a good thing we're not playing uh, blitz games or something like that today. Queen takes d5, e6, excuse me, and rook check, and it's made in what, 2? He's got bishop c5 here, actually. There's queen a8, so it's over. This is very quick, though. Queen d8, king b7, and rook c7. It's difficult to understand the context of what people are saying. Uh, funny anime, Jim, but I thought you were talking about submitting the game here. So, miniature, nice job. 21 moves, does that count? I need a new machine. I agree. I could switch to my other machine, but the webcam's not as good. It's more powerful. Maybe what I'll try to do is switch to the other machine. I don't know. And and like use a use the standalone webcam. I have another webcam. I can try it. We could try a different setup. Perhaps for like the Sunday Simul. I'll have time to maybe adapt something new. Okay, next game. Again, guys, thank you for supporting the stream. We've got a couple bit donations there from Bob and Funny Animator Jim. Is it is it is it both from Bob? Wait, what is that? We had three. All right, move eleven. You're going to be later. Um, we're going to do Astrobit. We did that. Merle Dixon next. Spastacular attacking miniature. <laughs> CM Shlomo. 
Uh huh. I hope CM is for real. Where's Soltigo? Keep your eyes peeled. So just warn me if there's anything funny happening in the chat, guys. Because I don't think Soltigo's here. He's had some problems. Yeah, I did Spassky's miniature, Spastacular. <laughs> That's kind of a corny title. Um, all right, we're going to go to Merle Dixon next. Where is it? Here. Any, um, any weird behavior in the chat? I'm the moderator here, so just let me know as soon as possible. Try to catch it as soon as we can. I would appreciate hearing your thoughts on my games with Elotherus, chapter 3 of my study. Dim3397. Sorry, I, I need new glasses. Dim3337. Yeah, Spassky's miniatures. Bob is not a mod. No, Bob's not going to... Bob is a mod. I will take over the mod. Bob is not a mod. I thought for a second I was like, almost had a heart attack. I thought... Soltigo like deputized him or something. Chess pats are wiles. Wiles. Whales. Thank you. Um, Dim is fine. Alright, Dim. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty laggy, but I don't think it's really affecting the, the video audio that much. Just my moving the pieces. So if we keep the stockfish turned off, hopefully it'll be alright. Um, this is Merle Dixon, the unbeatable one against GM chess coach. We've seen some battles like this before. I mean, I don't know if the problem with my computer may just be the fact that it's been like running all day and, and it like needs to be restarted. I didn't, I, I don't know, it's it's a little bit weird. So this guy, I, I can't believe he's doing this again. Like what kind of grandmaster plays d4 e5? Okay, if it's if it's a one minute game, I have no problem with it. If it's a three minute game, I have no problem with it. But no self respecting grandmaster is gonna play D forty five in a longer game. And this is supposed to be like a simul, right? I mean this guy is anonymous, is he not? Are we sure he's really a grandmaster? Cause there ain't no grandmasters <laughs> ain't no grandmasters I know who play like D four E five for reals. You see, I don't think Bratsky ever got the title, or Kalinichev. Kalinichev, Kalinichev is a different Kalinichev, but Sanal is a, is a crazy Turkish kid who's very, very strong. He's playing for the Turkish Olympic team um, at the moment. He's crazy enough to play this. We mentioned this once before, the last time that Merle submitted a game, it was also GM chess coach playing E5. I mean, this not really like you've got all your marbles okay d takes e5 you didn't submit this game already by uh, merle did i do something wrong am i repeating the same game it's chapter three okay thank you all right you you, you reassured me i'm glad all right, chapter three i knew that this was impossible that gm chess coach played it twice let's get the correct game out there anyway i can analyze the same game again i have done that in the past man we've got massive lag what is going on? Who there was a huge wave lag. I'm um, 218. There's sharks in these lags. These waves are so big. There, there are sharks in these wave lags. Lag waves. Um, you have a suggestion for this? Maybe bring a great game from a top player. And, and one game analysis for Thursday and make a series of it. You mean to do like one Grandmaster game? Like, I submit it myself, basically. Because that's, like, a reasonable idea. Any D4 player should watch GJ Chess's video on the England. I just don't waste my time, because play good players don't play D4E5. Here we are again. I don't want to do this game. But I'm having trouble clicking on anything. I just can't click on stuff. I think my, my problem might be my internet also not synced Merle Merle somebody's in the stream and they're not funny animator Jim is in your is in your study now and he's not letting me sync it if 
funny anim animator Jim stay out of the stay out of the study stay out of the study are you just watching you're not in the study why can't I sink here because Merle is in the study does it matter if I can't sink we're having some problems here folks D4E5 could be a Budapest, right? Yeah, if white plays like knight f3, knight f6, or no, c4, knight f6. It's not likely to happen. Um, a transposition. All right, we're on game three. Am I going to be able to play through this? Because I'm basically frozen at this point. But am I having trouble because Merle is in the study and I can't sync the study? All sync members remain on the same position. Merle, you've got to stop moving the pieces, dude. Um, you're messing me up. All right, let's close this out. I've got serious issues with my connection. We've got Merle Move 11 submitting a game. Let me try to open up a new window here. Maybe my problem is that I had two windows open. Ooh, this lag is not a joke. All right. It's hard to be, you know, paying attention to reading comprehension, guys. I should have paid attention. It's game three. None of you are in the study. No, but it wasn't letting me sync. So that means that somebody else must be in the study. Merle, you can't speak for Merle, funny animator. He might be in there. Um, it wouldn't let me sync the study. Now three, let me try. All right, now we can finally move. E4, E6, B3. Merle is black. I don't even have my engine turned on and I'm like frozen. It's the worst I've had lag, I can remember. Got no other applications running in my entire computer. Um, I got question mark for ping right now. 164 is not even that high. Okay, B3, very strange variation. The guy's 2300. What is the time control? 1200 plus five. Why do they have to list it like that? Why can't it say normally what the time control is? That drives me crazy. Um, all right, so D5. You can also play the Sicilian, of course. D5 is probably the best move. And then he's sacking a pawn here. It's up to you to take it or not. I mean, there's nothing wrong with knight f6. Even c5 again, transposing to a Sicilian. <clears throat> I think uh, I think that, that e6 is a good setup against the b3 Sicilian, by the way. So if you do, if you play the Sicilian as well, um, I would assume that c5 is a good choice here. If you don't play the Sicilian, that's not an option. Merle takes the pawn, so we watch it move in slow motion. Reminds me a little, like, a little bit of like a Jabava type of thing. Uh, Jabava B3, move one type of stuff. What's 20 and 5? 25, okay, that's the time control. 20 plus 5. But what was this, like a simul game? Hold on a second for a minute, guys. Hold on a second for a minute. kind of a slow start with a crazy lag guys sorry about that um, so Queen e2 very Jabava this looks pretty standard I think I'd be inclined not to take the pawn if I were black honestly it seems like that's what these people want you know they want you to take on e4 notice the score difference here if you look at, at the second best move or the second best move with Knight f6 can I play knight f6 
I mean, this seems to me like it's it's more like crossing what white wants here. You're not taking the pawn. You're not giving what they want. Dim, thank you for the donation, 100 bits, um, for the cheer. Knight f6 feels like you're not really giving them that that initiative they want. You know, it's not surprising me that this score is actually better than capturing the pawn on e4. I mean, it's partly psychological, but it also it might objectively be just as good a move. I think there should be a decrement for each move to all the players who play too fast in your simuls. Absolutely. Yeah, we should have demerits. Is that what you mean? Like a, a system of demerits? You have too many demerits and you can't play anymore. Need to use your time. All right. D takes e4, knight c3. Knight f6, queen e2, bishop e7, and then he gets his pawn back. No, I feel like white has a reasonable game here. And I got away with something almost. Look at the score. White has like 26 to 17. Like it's a completely normal system. I feel like it would be better just to not play their game. Castles. Knight f3. I mean, I don't see any known players in this list, actually. But uh, who you know who plays b3 against the French? Still, it's an open position. He's avoided the the morass of the closeness of the French. I would play this for White. I think if I was guaranteed, um, Black would would play this way. Decrement. It's it sounds like excrement. It just sounds too much like excrement, guys. Knight takes e4. Queen takes e4. We've got really no action here. Bishop f6. Killing the the game. This is where I like sort of feel ill and offer a draw. <laughs> right about this point, okay, Merle, it's another draw. You achieved it. So d4. The moment of truth. And surprisingly, there's no games at this point. So c5, bishop d3. He's got bishop d3 coming now. Incidentally, if we go back a moment. He could play bishop d3 straight up here, threatening mate in one, when you don't have f5, obviously. Is it just me? The only way you can beat Merle is by tricking him tactically. But what if White were to play like bishop d3 first, and then exchange bishops, and then play d4? Bishop d3 blocks his pawn. So that's impossible. Bishop d3, g6, and then say castles, I guess. Bishop d3, g6, let's try. We literally have to play g6. And then I guess taking on f6 develops a piece for black, so. And you could play like bishop takes f6 and, and castles kingside if you wanted to. I'm just curious if white has an advantage here, objectively. Computer claims a very small edge. Actually, it's getting bigger. I think the bishop e3 is an interesting idea. h4, h5 could be thrown in in the future. But the engine is claiming like bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and simply castles with a kind of lasting advantage. See, I, I can't even move a piece. Thank God I didn't have like a tournament tonight or something. Bishop takes, queen takes, castles. No, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to move pre-moving. I'm reconnecting. It's my internet now. Well, alright, so he didn't play that. d4 instead. Saving bishop d3 for next. Well, this is also good for white. I don't like the way that Merle played it. It feels like he played into the guy's strength. Yeah, I like this move though. I mean, queen d5 is definitely, definitely a fun killer. It looks like maybe bishop, e, bishop d3. Is that already too slow? Still the best move for white. Queen e3 is second best according to the engine. Let me turn this off though. Bias my, my analysis. Um, bishop d3 would be my choice. To transfer to an endgame where, okay, white's a little better. But he didn't want to trade queens. He's being a higher rated player. He doesn't want to let you trade queens. Yeah, but this is the problem. 
Now you've got C takes D4. You've achieved the ultimate goal of dismantling his uh, his center. I think this is this is really well played. Except castles is a sharp move. I didn't really expect. And literally, white is threatening to take on C5. So now what do we do? I mean, that seems like a serious problem. I would be very worried now. Pawn take seems to help white mobilize, and uh, although maybe that's what we have to do. That's what, what Merle did. The only other move that comes to mind is like rook d8, but that actually looks kind of artificial. It looks like he has to take. My first thought process going through, I mean, my first thought about this whole game going back, Merle, is don't do this anymore. You know, don't play this. Just play knight f6 and develop your pieces. Because it seems like d takes e4 gives white all the play. Maybe it's not a majorly dangerous line, but why give him anything here? I mean, if you play knight f6, he ever plays e5, he's going to have a dead bishop on b2. Dead bishops on the landing. Yeah, I think this is this is a much better system. So here we are. Um, then it's like he keeps pieces on again. Now our queen is in serious danger. And it just doesn't seem to have a good place to go. It looks like we have to play, I thought, queen a e5, queen a5 in this position. Merle found an ingenious move, queen e5. That looks crazy, but maybe maybe good enough to hold. I need to improve your opening play. I mean, my first instinct is to play this, to bias the tempo. And then I guess like king b1. And I have nothing better to suggest than knight c6. The nightmare endgame, that's awful for black, right? Knight takes here, b takes, bishop takes, and even even Yevgeny Bareyev would lose this. This is like pretty bad. I don't want to look at this anymore. So this is like a critical moment. Queen a5 may be playable, but I don't know what we play next. If we play queen a5, king b1, I don't know what to do. Knight c6 is no good. So we have to find a calm response, like a6 or something like that. But again, it looks like white has attacking chances. Bishop there, queen over to h3. We'll have e5, maybe. Maybe black has time to play e5 now. For example, bishop d3, e5. That's ugly, though. Then this knight f5 and white is better. Um, so this amazing move here, queen e5. Black literally has no development. <laughs> and you're just going to trade queens and, and kill his fun. Queen d2 resigns. Um... Yeah, let's avoid the trade of queens and play queen d2. Shame he didn't play that. You must be granted... Eliminate the trolls. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he, he was biding his time, but it's the same guy. Yeah, he's banned. Sorry. But he was very tricky, the troll. You know, he, like laid low for a little while till I wasn't paying attention. Sorry about that. I mean, I had the feeling that was our old friend, the racist, but, um, but you couldn't be 199 or you couldn't be 99.9% .9 certain till he, he laid low and then started trolling. Queen e5. Okay. I've got to bust the engine on this position. Cause I mean, I can't believe this. Putting the queen in take there is our best defense. <sighs> Computer found another good move, knight c6. Leaving the queen on d5 is scary, but... The important thing is that we can play bishop takes b2 check at any moment. So white's going to need to take time here to like make several moves, like bishop e2 and king b1 before we can start doing anything. I mean, queen e5 is a little bit of hope chess, <clears throat> and uh, I'm not surprised white didn't trade queens. The engine claims that queen e5 is the best move, but that's clearly not on white's agenda. Queen h3, avoiding the trade. So this is the problem, though. If we trade here, trade here, knight b5, we have the weak squares. White has some kind of like 
Sveshnikov thing where you have to put your knight on a6 and and then it's like you're going to suffer for the next 80 moves in the, in the lost ending. He missed this. This is just very strong for white. You're going to just really regret you were ever born. After bishop takes b2 check, king takes b2. No, you don't have to play knight a6, thankfully. Knight c6. It's unpleasant. Let's just say that. You know, this this end game where the white king is on b2, he's going to push these up in, in the queenside majority. Any kind of strong grandmaster will make black suffer for the next 60, 50, 60 moves um, for sure. But I don't like this. I mean, knight b5 is very natural. We don't need an engine for that. That That's the first move I would even consider for white. Queen e5 is a hard move to find. It's probably not as good as, as we thought, though. Um... So, but he, he didn't want to trade queens. White was being too dogmatic, you know, about this. Will not trade queens. I do not trade queens. Knight c6. Ooh. Bishop d3, g6. And now c3. And I'm like, what? And there's a rainbow. You know, suddenly, like, white is not better anymore. Wait a minute now. So that's the best he could do. The whole position is sucks for white now after c3. Your whole opening is refuted. So the whole thing is just bad. I mean, if that's the best move you have in this position. Isn't there anything better he can do? Not really, because of queen f4 check, we're actually going to literally win a piece. And this guy, his day was ruined. So he could have just traded queens into a clearly better ending. Instead, he played queen h3, letting black challenge the strong knight on d4. And this does nothing because it only blocks his protection of d4. And now after g6, white has nothing. So he just he's just screwed. Yeah, I mean, he missed his one chance being too dogmatic about not trading queens. And now black is, like, at least equal. Can we can we get greedy and take the pawn on f2? I, I somehow doubt that. Now we just play safely with black. And uh, we've got little tricks with e5 maybe at some point. Merle, Merle did what? Queen f4 check. Oh, now you want to trade queens. I understand. Now he wants to trade queens. Bishop g5, maybe. What does white do after bishop g5? Is not the problem. Let's check this quickly. I don't want to spend forever on just one game. We've got some more games to talk about. I said, Stockfish, what's up? So queen takes, bishop takes, move the king, and he can maybe still be fine. It's not that bad for white, despite having an isolated pawn. His pieces are very active. And I also don't really want to let that get out of control. It's a tough decision, though. It's really a tough decision. Let's develop our pieces. Good job. Bishop e4. And now we should be able to simply play rook check and bishop c6. Yeah. So check. You could consider f check too. Rook fc8. But I guess this is right. King d2. I mean, king d2 is... You see, the problem is he leaves his bishop unprotected. So he can't do any kind of tricks with d5 now. Because if you played king b1 and then bishop c6, white might have some sort of d5 trick. So he, he centralizes his king, but now after bishop c6, I don't like b6, Merle. You should just play bishop c6, and it's equal. b6 was weakening your structure and not challenging a very powerful bishop on e4. This is a serious mistake. b6 now. You're not going to get a second chance. Now white is better again. Big blunder. And Merle plays h5. That's kind of a weird move. That's two bad moves in a row. White's just a total chicken. Should tar and feather him. Rook takes c8. What? That's just like, if you have like 30 seconds on the clock or something, why Why do you want to do that? I mean, you could play bishop b7 here and just force a better version of said position. This is horrible. White gives away all his advantage. Rook takes c8, and then we can just agree to a draw now. This is absolutely equal. Merle should draw with no problem. 
check. There it goes, another piece off the board. I'm lagged out. I mean, is this my internet doing this? Let me turn this off. Because I can't figure it out if it's my internet or if it's, it's the OBS. Bishop takes, king takes, this is just a dead draw. I don't like the fact that Bernal has so many pawns fixed on, on white squares, but it shouldn't really be a big deal. And maybe white should be already like thinking h4 here. You see he didn't want to move where he had a minority. Not sure what he's doing with king c3, to be honest. Good job, Merle. Don't let your pawns get on the wrong color. This is just a draw. All right, interesting game. Some key points. I, I wouldn't play that d takes e4 anymore. It doesn't seem right. Let's go back to the next game. Um, we've got Bob, move 11. Check task manager CPU. Uh, I can do that. Checking my task manager. I got way too many Firefoxes open. It's kind of weird though. I mean, why should there be so many Firefoxes open? There's only two Firefoxes. I'm afraid there's like old Firefoxes that never got closed or something. My memory is uh, way up. Firefox is doing crazy, crazy stuff. God tier. Yeah, Streamlabs doesn't seem to be messing with me. It, it definitely seems to be something with the Firefox. Of course, like, I guess. I know that it seems like the OBS sucks up a lot of it, but it doesn't seem like if I look here in the task manager that Streamlabs is really messing with me. It appears that it's Firefox that's messing with me um, really heavily. And I don't really understand why. Um, probably need to need to uh, refresh my Firefox. Um, all right, we had a message there from Fluke GM, but I had no clue what he's talking about. <clears throat> Very strange guy. He asked me what study. I don't know what study you're talking about. Okay, move 11, Bob Sakamano. Bob is next. All right, we're going to do the Bob game. No, we're not playing today, 10-year-old. We're doing a subscriber stream, game analysis. International Master William Pascal with... International Master Ponda with William. Hey, guys. You know, this Firefox thing should be Fire Panda. Red Panda. Get it? All right. No, I, I should run Chrome probably. Chrome works better with. Um, it works better with. At least it used to work better with the, uh, with the Stockfish as well. Um, that's probably still the case. I hate supporting Google. Okay, Bob. You think the Firefox is fine? Yeah, but I mean, who knows if mine is up to date and stuff. Okay, Bob Sakamano. This is Caruana Fabiano versus Anand Viswanathan. Catalan Open Defense. This is from? Dude, where is the game? All right. It does not show us the date. Bob, do you know when this game was played? Any clue? It would be good to know. So it's Catalan. A strange Catalan with Queen A4 check. Oh, this morning? What? Oh, seriously? Awesome. Wow, from the Olympics. Caruana Anand. Board 1? USA against India? I haven't even looked. What happened in the match? Juicebox Wizard, thanks for joining us here. You're leaving here in about an hour for your flight. You'll catch us next week. You're going to be in Cambodia, right? 
Man, have a great trip. Bob is going to suggest the same game. Okay, I'm glad you guys brought this up. E6, G3. Again, sorry for the lag, guys. Um, I've got craziness today with with uh, apparently Firefox. USA smashed India? Or got smashed? We got massive problems. My connection is floating in and out. I really don't have a clue anymore if it's my OBS, if it's my internet, if it's if it's Firefox. Well, that's not smashed. I mean, that's like a standard win of a match, you know? Bishop g2, d takes c4. Okay. I'm not enough of an expert, really. It makes you wonder, you know. I mean, it's worth just considering this position. It's really, really... There's got to be a difference between bishop g2 and knight f3, you know. I mean, it's it's a very minor thing, but it's sort of upsetting that there's like 5,000 games with one, one and 5,000 games with the other. Like, literally, one has to be better than the other. For me, I mean, the knight should probably be more of a priority going to f3. You know, it seems like you get more for your money when you play knight f3. You get that immediate control of, of e5 and d4. Also covers d2. Um, statistically, if you look, it's almost identical results. And that's a large sample size. But I mean, I'm not enough of an authority on bishop g2 d takes c4 to know, you know, what the deal is with queen a4 check here. I mean, my assumption is that after, like, knight f3, I mean, I never see queen a4 check. Of course, most people play bishop e7. You, you do see d takes c4, but here, like, queen a4 check, how often is that played? Yeah, a thousand games. Pretty much the same thing. I mean, there may be some small differences, but anyways, okay, bishop g2, d takes c4, queen a4 check. So basically like a harmless, what should be a harmless sideline chosen here by Caruana. Queen a4 check. This is something that's just not on, you know, on your radar when you're like Anand probably. This is not our major concern. But it's very notable if we look there, the first game is Giri versus Anand from 2018. That's something that had to be considered. Obviously, Caruana may have seen something in that game that he liked. Um, GCS, do you know anything about this Queen A4 check? Because, um... It shouldn't be dangerous for Black. But Caruana must have detected something, you know, he liked. I would assume Black could play any of those three moves. Bishop D7, Knight D7, or C6. They, they should all be playable. But the statistics look very, very clear. The this knight on BD7 is not only the most popular, but clearly the best by test. Again, it's a small sample size, but significant. Knight on BD7. Of course, Anand's memory is like phenomenal. He is like literally a walking encyclopedia. Um, and he's legendary about that, like ever since he started in the early, you know, basically the late 80s. I mean, whenever he started. He's just, he, he basically memorized, like, ECO. Um, that's what I heard. You know, he, he literally can remember everything. So I don't know if he has a photographic memory or what, but he, he's, re like, legendary. Um, so queen takes c4, apparently best. And uh, so this is actually... What is this, a reti? We haven't even played knight f3, so it's, it's technically... A Catalan, but it's not. Yeah, it's like a Catalan. A6. There is an interesting statistical divide, though. Um, not a lot of uh, games to really call that a statistical relevant, statistically relevant sample size, but it is notable. It's a little bit notable that Black's winning chances are slightly better with C5 as opposed to A6. Probably not, not a really significant difference, though. Um... <clears throat> 
see what the old stockfish says if it doesn't overload my engine. It agrees. For me, that's significant. You know, both stockfish and the statistics seem to point to C5 giving black better winning chances. Though the winning chances are one statistic point higher, one percentage point higher for white after C5, it's only 29 games. Someone actually played e5 here. Man, rook b8 is a move. Theoretical novelty. Of course queen a4 is unambitious. But Caruana picked a particular game he liked. He must have liked what he saw in Giri Anand, like the previous game Anand has played this variation. a6. Wow. Holy crap. So Caruana just turned on Stockfish and played Bishop E3. This is like lazy man preparation. Caruana literally turned on the engine. He's like, I don't want to prepare, prepare for Anand. I'm just going to like pick the first move I can find that the computer suggests to take Anand out of book. <laughs> he played literally Bishop E3. This has never been played before. Wow. He's like, screw it, I'm not going to test Anand's memory. I'm going to play something totally new. Stockfish says bishop b3, let's play it. Wow. So that's like super grandmaster preparation on a one-game basis. I mean, he literally prepared for this move, you know, he literally found this move within five minutes of starting to prepare for Anand. He was probably like, hey, look, Anand Giri, what can we do? Hey, wait, the computer prepares, it actually... Like, recommends bishop e3 you know I, I would imagine that it would fall down from point two at some point if we go deep enough but the first thing we learned is that c5 is technically more accurate and the second thing we learned is that caruana is tricky in his preparation so he comes up with bishop e3 we're out of book anon's memory is no longer an enemy and then here it's supposed to be b5, queen d3, rook b8, according to the engine. But Vichy, he's got issues. I mean, he's got the long diagonal, he's got to solve that. And he's also got to solve how to break up the strong pawn on d4. So you, you got to get in b5 and or c5 to equalize. And so bishop b3 discourages c5. And meanwhile, Anand doesn't pull the trigger on b5, trying to neutralize the bishop on g2. Wow. Suddenly my stockfish just fell off the cliff with b5. Of course bishop b3 is a logical move stopping c5. But it's not a standard theme. You know, the, nobody puts the bishop on e3 in the Catalan. This is a special variation because where knight, knight f3 is not on f3, it's on g1. Well, this has just got to be critical. If queen c6, of course, you know, the first dumb move you, you analyze here, I mean, rook, rook a7 or rook b8, but rook a7, got to watch out. It's actually the best move. We either want, queen c6 is just bad. It just wastes time. So probably you should come back, I don't know, queen c1 or something. Then rook b8. Then what What do we do? Guess Caruana's preparation, like knight d2, knight d2, knight, knight b3. <laughs> What do we do here? This is really interesting. I'm glad you submitted this game, Bob. But did not play bishop d6. So this looks like he's gone for a semi-slav type of solution. Um, he's going to try to break free with e5 instead of with, with c5. And now Caruana with queen c2 averting b5. But in the semi-slav type of situation, we would normally not have a6, we'd have c6 and play for e5. Now it's like a hybrid. <clears throat> Castles, white to play, knight f3 looks like the most natural move. But instead, Caruana here plays knight h3, which looks a bit rope-a-dope, you know? So naturally, Anand plays e5. This should be, it should be good. 
So he actually got, I mean, the knight on h3, not all that well placed. Castles, principled move, black plays h6. h6 kind of a scared move. Like, oh, I don't want to allow knight g5. Kind of afraid of ghosts. It could come back to haunt black by weakening his structure. This move is much more compact. Less weaknesses is better. So move 11 said Carl simply bishop e3 in the Catalan against the nine in a different variation. Bishop e3, knight g4, and let black take on e3. Interesting. Yeah. So castles, h6 is slow. White play is what? D takes e5. That's a surprising move a little bit. Kind of like developing black's pieces for him. I would think that he would want to play like knight c3 and keep the tension here with white. But the engine agrees with this. What's wrong with knight c3? Because that seems to be like the best square. Maybe this move, we come here and sometimes the knight will come to like c4 with knight d2. At the end of the day, what do we think about the position? I mean, basically, Kairawana has traded off Black's central pawn for a flank pawn, so he has a kind of latent central advantage, let's say this pawn on e2, though it's going to take a long time to really make that factor into things. Queen e7, um, rook d1, this way we can tuck the bishop back on c1, very normal idea, like a tarash type of thing, you can come back there. We got a rook cross. I'm expecting a good game here from Caruana. Rook e8, knight f4, and Anand takes away the d5 square with c6. Sorry for the lag, guys. Let me turn the engine off for a minute. Maybe that'll help. My, my ping is not that high, but I seem to have lag without the high ping. Um, Alright, I've Oh, I think it's my it's my browser. So bishop d4. And now Anand just lost his mind completely. <sighs> Dude, I mean seriously, every time I play g5 in a middle game as black in a d4 opening, I lose. It happened to me like twice last year. Um, in the first Saturday Grandmaster tournament last 2017. Two, two, zero. two zeros where I played g5. I mean, seriously, that doesn't look right, you know? I mean, you're very, very seriously weakening your king side. It's going to freak out. Like, the engine's going to freak out. No, it's actually first thinking about g5, then, then not playing it. I mean, dude, seriously, g5. This, I mean, you just drastically weakened, you just drastically weakened your king side, man. That's a very optimistic move by Anand. 93. I mean, maybe he was looking at bishop f5, but then there's lots of tactics with like e4, I suppose. This is very complicated. My, my guess is that he wanted to play bishop f5 and then somehow like decided not to pull the trigger on it. At the last minute, he decided he didn't like bishop f5 or something. I mean, I could see that. You know, playing bishop f5 here looks logical. If you got the bishop on f5 patrolling this diagonal, maybe you can get away with g5. But it seems weird not to play bishop f5. Now he plays this. You kind of, wow, like you're like, oh, now nah, I'll just play knight takes d3. And then rook takes d3, and you're like, okay, bishop f5 doesn't work? Apparently not, because um, some sort of tactical tricks. Kablam? That's nice, you know, that, that's really nice. Bishop takes f6. Bishop takes d3. Bishop takes e 7 bishop takes e 2 bishop takes d6. And we win two pieces for a rook, right? And there's also queen takes f6, rook takes f6. So that's sort of sick. 
Caruana with the tactics, you know, he's always been good at that. So Anand doesn't have bishop f5, he has to sell for this. And if he hadn't played g5, I would say that he's close to equalizing. But with g5, he's weakened his king side. You know, that could be a very big long-term problem. Um, so here, white has a small edge, queen d2. And now he plays bishop f5. e4. And then f4, a very blatant move, wow. Okay, sorry. He lost in just a couple moves after this. But uh, what the heck is going on? Yeah, this is where it starts to get weird. I mean, my first idea is bishop takes d4 check, rook takes d4, and queen c5, I guess. But that's going to drop material to take you on f6. I mean, yeah, Nantes. Not in good condition, I guess. He should be all right. Bishop takes d4 check, rook takes d4. I was thinking this. Maybe this isn't good enough. Might well, could just step out of the pin. But all I can say, guys, is that, you know, you play g5 and you get what you paid for, you know? I mean, that's not a move you should play in Olympiad and, and it's risky enough in a, in a regular tournament um, to play g5. But you don't play g5 when you're playing in a team tournament in a very important game on board one for your country. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, but this move is this move is just blatantly reckless. You know, and even if it's okay, he even Anand went wrong. You know, he couldn't even calculate a few moves correctly here because it's difficult, you know. But why put yourself in that situation by playing g5? f4, g takes f4, this is apparently a blunder. So you have to find a very direct continuation that's kind of tricky. You play here. Threatening, I guess, queen c5. And only in this line is black okay, according to the engine, maybe. But he didn't find it. Instead, he played g takes f4 in this position. But again, you're, you're giving yourself a very small window of... of uh, a very small window a room for mistakes when you play moves like g5. g takes f4, bishop takes e5, queen takes e5, and now g takes f4. And it feels like a Sicilian all of a sudden. A Sicilian where black is weakened to his king side and his bishop's getting smushed with f5. Damn, that's brutal. He's just like lost already. That's impressive. Queen c5, check king h1. I mean, he lost like a beginner, in a way. It looks like he lost like a beginner. Truthfully, he had rook d8, he had a way out, but it was too difficult or too much pressure to find it. But that's why I don't want to see Anand playing in any more world championships. Now, wait a second here. There must have been a second blunder. I didn't think this was even possible. Wow. Wow. So bishop takes e4. Let's calculate this first. Oh, we're simply winning a rook with queen g2 check. All right, so that's not possible. So now I basically saw this much after rook takes e4. And this must have been his whole hallucination, you know. This is what he missed. He probably even saw f5. He literally is, is very, very strong tactically. I mean, he probably even saw f5, bishop takes f5, or something like taking on h6. No doubt he missed rook g3. I mean, this, this has to be the, the denouement. So Vichy missed rook g3. I mean, it could happen to anybody. And this variation didn't, didn't come on his radar. But that's really hard to see, dude. Once again... This is why Caruana is 2800, because he's so, not only is he good strategically, but he's just insane tactically. Um, yeah, literally Anand has to be a computer after playing a move like G5, and he, he just isn't, you know, he's not a computer. 
So he can't play perfectly. And uh, queen e3, he just resigned. Because f5, and what are you going to do? Literally, like, there's no defense. King h8 would be f5 anyway. King h7, trapture and bishop. What do we do after king h7? That's got to be the best try. King h7, f5, bishop h5. You know, this isn't that obvious. I certainly would have played it out. And I just resigned. I mean, play a couple more moves, man. Rook h3. And the bishop's trapped. And there's the, 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 the death on h6. So there's a lot behind the curtain that, you know, you didn't actually see. Um, well, I mean, Tushark, you're a very tactically oriented player, so for you it might be particularly strange. But I think it's totally reasonable to miss rook g3. Um, but the point is, for me, that he shouldn't have put himself in that situation. Okay, so that's what happened to Anand. Don't play g5. Next game, um, we got a submission from Ubatis, too. We're going to do move 11 next. Panda has something to add, guys. So the lesson from this is don't play g5, play h5. Okay, there's a fundamental difference. h5 only weakens like one square, but when you play g5, you weaken two squares. Don't forget. All right, so Vishwanathan, Vishwanathan Anand. Not quite what he used to be. Um, let's try this uh, move 11 game. Brr. You want to look at the Boris Privman game. This is move 11 versus Fide Master Boris Privman. And this is move 11 is white. I have not seen this game. This was top secret. Basically, Proofman is what I would consider like a draw player. He, uh, he tries to try, he sort of tries to draw all of his games. First priority is to draw. I shouldn't really criticize anyone though. I'm kind of becoming like that. All right, so let's turn off the engine here and take a look. Um, this is not the game, Proofman game. All right. We got some unexplained lag in the house, which doesn't look that bad here on Lee Chess, according to my, my lag -a meter but it's making it hard for me to move the pieces. Maggie, 103 ping, you'd think everything was fine, and I just can't even like move a piece or go like one move ahead in the game. Okay, E4, D6. I remember I had a game with Proofman, it was like knight f3. It must have been knight f3, d6, c4, e5, d4, e4, one of those lines. That's the only game I remember. Um, d4, I have some draws and some wins against him. Never lost the tournament game, thank god. d4, knight f6, knight c3 e5, knight f3, and then knight on bd7. Admittedly, the Hanum variation seems a lot more solid for black than the exchange Philidor, which has been kind of trendy in recent years. Uh, th there's no... <laughs> Is this the FM that you wanted to punch? It could be! There's, there's a significant chance. Um, knight on bd7. 
Bishop c4. Bishop c4 main line. Shirov, of course, plays g4. That's quickly become the second most popular move for white. I remember, like, what, six years ago when this was an SOS in New and Chess yearbook or New and Chess magazine, whatever, yearbook or magazine. Um, I'm sure I've had invented this, whatever, when it, whenever it was. Let's see. It's now become, like, kind of one of the main lines against the Hanum variation. Shirov as my published really 2003, so it's been around for 15 years now. Wow, time goes fast. G4. But it's no longer a surprise, and people are still playing it. Bishop C4. <laughs> you know already. Bishop E7. There's so many different setups for white. You pretty much got a castle king side. Castles, castles. Yeah, so this is the critical position against the Philidor. And I used to be of the opinion that... I mean, of course you could play other setups with like g3, bishop g2, um, or the Shirov. But this is the critical question now, what white plays in this position. I used to be the opinion that I liked the classical um, queen e2. I mean, I think that there was, for a very long time, in many books and sources, like queen e2, rook d1... This was kind of considered to be maybe one of the main lines. But it seems like in modern times, the rookie one has a, superseded it. Now here, move 11 played a4. And I don't know that there's anything wrong with a4. Um, Master Bates says, what did g4 do? It's a gambit. It's a pawn sacrifice trying to tempt black to take on g4. It sacrifices a pawn, Master Bates. It's very, very tricky. And white gets a kind of raging initiative if black takes the pawn on g4. It's reminiscent of the g4 idea in the in the semi-slav. Um, the Marin, anti-Marin with g4. Bayonet attack. So here, c6. And now bishop a2, because black is threatening, like, knight takes e4 type of stuff. So bishop a2 is definitely standard. And still move 11 has the option to play either queen e2 or rook e1. I guess either of these variations. Now black played b6. Is that the main line? Because instead of b6, I suppose, they're just there's queen c7. That's probably a move. And a5 is like kind of old school. It's unnecessarily committal. I think black black prefers to play like b6, a6, and keep flexibility to try to play b5 in some moment. So it turns out that b6 is the most common, as proven played here. But I think queen c7, you know, is, is playable. b6. Now the main move is queen e2. Rook e1 is possible. So move 11 plays queen e2. This is classic. Remember Alexander Ivanov playing this in the U.S. Open? He has it all memorized. A lot of theory. Knight h4 is a kind of pivotal idea where you can play knight h4 and knight f5. I think this is one of the more key ideas. a6, rook d1. Oh, you didn't play rook d1. So that's the thing. Move 11 here goes off... He goes off... Uh, what was the word I'm looking for? I want to say off something. The main idea of queen e2 is not just to play queen c4, but that's a tactical theme. The main idea of queen e2 is to play rook d1. And I mean, I'm so used to doing that in queen pawn games, where it's like the queen's gambit accepted, or some kind of queen's gambit, even queen's gambit declined. I mean, queen e2, rook d1 is a very standard idea. It's not something, yeah, made up. I mean... Rook d1 is just absolutely, you know, and also just bearing down on d5. If we can play it like a Sicilian, because the Sicilian structure can arise here. If white plays d5 and black takes on d5, we're going to get a position like absolutely straight up out of the Sicilian. If you show that position to somebody after rook d1, d5, cd, bishop takes, or knight takes d5, they're going to say, hey, it's a Nidorf. You'd be like, no, it's not a Nidorf, it's a Philidor. Oh, they're like, oh, really? Shit, I thought it was a Sicilian. So it literally becomes a Sicilian um, after d5. 
But the question is the timing. It's very tricky. Like, when is d5 good? Black doesn't have to take on d5. He can just kind of absorb it, maybe wait. Um, but this is a major moment where, it, you know, I don't know. Move 11 tried to play knight h4 a little bit later. Bishop e3. You could transpose. We could yet transpose. I mean, this looks like a good move to me, even though it's never been played. My only, you know, my only downside is that it could be attacked by by knight g4. But I would assume if you did that, you would like get blasted on d5. Now maybe you could play something like knight g4, d5, c5, and turn it into acerbate land with the check Benoni, like a very strange, a very very strange check Benoni here, um, because Black will lose the battle for d5 otherwise. So the knight should the knight stay on f6? That's the question. Should the knight stay on f6 to keep d5 under control in the event of d5, or can he go out on an adventure and try to take that that bishop out on e3? Um, instead, okay, Pribin does a very principled thing. He just plays bishop b7. I mean, you can't really argue with that. Curious what the computer will do. Is it going to take this opportunity to play like knight g4, or is it going to play Pribin's bishop b7 or something else? Looks like something black made up. A5. A5 is a... I don't like A5. Knight G4 is, is in the top variations. It's interesting to note, though, that if Knight G4, you could possibly just move your bishop back. Say, ha, I'm just kidding. I'm not really going to give you my bishop. And that happens in Sicilian, so you could repeat moves. I mean, maybe... Black has nothing better than to go back and give you a second chance to like repeat, you know, go back into the main line with Rook D1, in other words. Nair versus Baldogan, 2018, 1-0. Um, I like Bishop B3. I mean, you could play H3. You see a couple people played that, but it weakens your king side rather unnecessarily. So, all right. Bishop B3, theoretical novelty from Mr. Move 7. Looks like a playable move. Turn off the engine here. And then, let's see, bishop b7. Now rook fd1. Now we're likely to see a transposition, but we didn't. That's weird. No transposition. I'm quite surprised by that. This position hasn't been reached. Queen c7. Still no transpositions. Now we got one game. Mork and Mindy. Mork against Mensch. Tian Mensch played here in, in Budapest sometimes. So knight h4. Also played by Mork. That's the only plan I can think of. I mean, you do have queen c4 at times. But I don't think it makes a lot of sense here where there's no weakness on f7. Um, this is really bad on my end. Anyone else having problems? Well, I'm... I'm getting a lot of lag on my end, but I didn't think it was really affecting the stream. I don't think so. You should just refresh your uh, refresh your your Twitch page there. Spectacular Camel. Knight h4. And now proven played. B5. No, he didn't. He took on d4. So Mensch played b5, which looks more more or less logical. Um, constructive move of sorts. You could call, like, improvements of deconstructive. I mean, does E takes D4 do anything for black other than give away your strong point on E5? It gives black a square for his knight on E5. I mean, that's the only... the only upside of D takes E4. Ain't no way the stockfish is going to play e takes d4 here if you force it to make a decision. It thought about it, then it decides, oh no, I'd rather play g6. Anything but that. Coming up with d5. Wow. Base it on... you got to be really a special breed of player, by the way, to play the Philidor. My, my ex-teammate, my ex Zoltan Varga, plays Philidor. 
Now it's actually agreeing with with Privman. Wow, e takes d4. Okay, I guess I missed something. e takes d4, and I also was considering bishop takes. But don't hold my stockfish to account. I, I still disagree with e takes d4 in principle. Um, but I wouldn't play the Philidor anyway. I tried to play it against Nefidov, and I lost. Um, should white ever recapture with a rook on d4? Well, obviously, you know, if you're Mikhail Tal, then you've got... You've got deep plans of transferring over here, like in the Velomirovich or something. There's the famous Tal game where he takes on d4 in, in the Sicilian Velomirovich and plays e5 clearance with, with rook, rook h4 and mating attacks. Of course you should consider rook takes d4, I would say. Absolutely, but you just have to analyze it concretely. The c4 square is possible for like a rook or queen. It's very awkward. I mean, my intention is to take with the bishop, so you did that. And I don't know what really black has gained here by giving up the strong point. So bishop takes d4. Now let me go back here. So Pribben played g6. I don't know, I must be really hungry, guys, because I'm smelling Chinese food. And there's no Chinese food in the house. G6. Can somebody send me some Chinese food? We've got to get that hooked up. You know, the food donations thing? Seriously. Help me get this hooked up. We've induced weaknesses. Black's given up the strong point on E5. He's weakened his king side. you got to look for sacrifices here, you know? Knight F5, followed by Rook D3. I mean... Just humor me for a second. Let's just be creative. Is there any possible way like we could sacrifice a piece here? Like rook d3. This is probably too much, but let's just... You guys know Blue Velvet, the movie? I've got allergies, but I'm thinking of a scene from Blue Velvet. Come on, let me play rook d3, computer. Sosich 2405. We can't trust anything my, my stockfish kicks out. Hungarian Chinese food, it's very... Well, I mean, there are a lot of good restaurants now in Hungary. I mean, we've got a huge tourist industry really booming. Um, in Budapest, you can find everything. Sushi, Indian food, Mexican food, and a lot of it is very good. The one thing that's booming in, in Hungary is really the the tourist industry, especially in the in districts rather close to mine. So you could definitely find some. No, this doesn't work, apparently. Okay, I wanted to make it work. We need a little more force behind the sacrifice here. So it looks like Move 11 played correctly. He had to sadly retreat. Um, but the damage has been done, you know, to the Black King side, I would say. Now he's, Privman is playing principally for, for exchanges, his favorite strategy. What we don't want to do is take on e5. And we need a way to improve our position. And immediately move 11 took on e5. Computer disagreed though. The computer said he should have taken on e5. What? Well, you better have something good here after this. Because I'm not seeing it. Knight takes e5. What the heck? The engine is claiming knight takes e5, d takes e5, bishop e3. Man, okay, so it's got a very concrete idea, bishop h6, queen c4, and then barreling down on f7. Well, it either works or it doesn't work. You know, b5, stopping queen c4. It's just not that convincing. Bishop h6, all we've done is make this bishop good. And then, uh, I'm not at all sold on this. So once again, I think my, my stockfish... And my computer is too slow. It's just, it's just churning out garbage variations. Um, I wouldn't take on e5. And, and move 11 took with the bishop, which is even worse. Um, that dark square bishop is a good piece. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. 
I want to just improve my position like little by little here. I mean, it's annoying that he is kind of threatening b5, b4 type of stuff, admittedly. Um, <laughs> deeply offensive with a smiley face. So I don't know, move 11, is there any way you can just play this position for a small edge? Look at this variation. This is tense, man. But like, rook b1 with the idea of b5, b4, grabbing space on the queen side. That's something I could see myself playing, being, being like a d4 player. It reminds me of like a Zamish King's Indian or something where we're just kind of holding black on the queen side. This kind of line, I think, I don't mind. We're just trying to keep the tension and, and just do what we can. I have to admit, though, this does look a little scary. Like, knight h5, what are we going to do about that? We'll probably have to play bishop e3. Yeah, actually, no big deal. Bishop comes back here. The bish. It all looks a little desperate for black, you know? So I think you were, you were impatient, move 11. Bishop takes e5 um, is a major, major concession strategically. I know that your a2 bishop is great, but you just have to think about, guys, in terms of what we can learn from this. And this is a good example of this concept. When you make a move like, and I'm sure move 11 like realized this indirectly or directly, when you make a move like this, happens in the Sic Sicilian too, you got to remember not just what you're doing for your pieces, but what you're doing for the other guy's pieces. It's kind of like playing poker and and the beginning poker players who don't stop to think about what their opponent has, you know. They only think about what they have. Hey, I've got two aces. I'm all in. But they don't stop to think about what the other guy can have. You know, he can have three of a kind or whatever, you know, and they're all excited about what I can do. But look what you're doing for the other guy. I mean, his bishop, which was a pawn, is now a very strong piece. And that's why I'm sure that move 11 realizes this. It's also about maintaining attention. I agree. And, and that's one of the most important concepts that I, I would write in a book. You know, if I ever do an instruction book about chess, maintaining attention is one of the foremost ones. Move 11 gives us attention. He also makes an exchange that's like strategically very good for black, you know, mobilizing that bishop on e7. Now, I know that he did this for tactical purposes. Like, it's very likely he even concretely realized that okay, I'm I'm I know what I'm doing here is risky strategically. Um, he's looking for tricks based on tactics, maybe with knight d5. The only way I could see this position working out for white is if you take over the white squares and and then you have some sort of knight or Sveshnikov um, thing where it's like you've got the better opposite color bishop situation. That's the only scenario I see this really really panning out to white's advantage. Privman makes a passive move now with knight e8. He's looking for knight g7, knight e6, but, but he's kind of a passive player by nature, which is actually his weakness. And now um, and now move 11 just goes, you know, he goes into panda mode. Pandemodium. A new term has been born. Pandemodium. It's absolute pandemodium. Guys, please support the stream and the panda. I notice a lot of my, my viewers are getting, you know, a little bit loopy with the H4, H5. Um, it's just tempting, isn't it, H4? Caveman. It's like cave panda. Cave panda, he wants to play knight to g5. It's a good move for a blitz game, but it feels kind of desperate to me. Although maybe now there's nothing better, to be honest. There's always something. H3 is like ranked second on Stockfish suggestions. But again, let's turn this off because it's just like my computer is probably spitting out junk again. Um, we may need to <laughs> reupholster. <laughs> is that what you call it? Reupholstering? Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is our subscriber stream. Is there a free secret in chess? It's Chisari. 
1648. Free secret. Free secret. Yes, the free secret is think about what you're doing for your opponent, not only about what you're doing for yourself. That's our secret of the day. Move 11, besides just releasing the tension, he just released his guy's bad bishop, like becoming like a great bishop here, because he's thinking about tactics for himself, not about what he's doing for the other guy. Um, is it in the style of the Great Dane? What, h4? Um, feels very caveman. Immediately, like, immediately, I mean, come on. Proven is, is reacting, you know, with h6. He's paralyzed with fear that white might have a threat. Um, but h6 weakens his position. But I'm not sure if it's necessarily a good move. We have a tactic now? Because move 11 is like playing a5, which seems a bit strange. Literally like forcing black to play what I thought was an advantageous move with b5. What we want is black to play c5, please. Play c5. Well, I mean, the point is that he can play b5 anyway. We can't really stop him. Now his knight is defending the queen. There could be some rather deep tactics here, guys. Just envision that black plays b5. We take, he takes, we take, he takes, we take the queen on c7. Then we play like rook d7, forking the, the knight and bishop. Then he plays like bishop d8. Then we can play knight takes e5, bringing down the triple attack on f7. Just humor me for a second here, but just... If white were to play like king h1, and black were to play b5, and we were to play a b, just just a hypothetical variation. I want to check this. Let's play king h2. You know, just so we don't get back ranked. Hold on a second. Just so we get some handle on what's going on tactically. I mean, is black threatening to play b5 or not? Let's see. Take, 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 take. I just want to see this for a second. Take, take, and then here. Let me see what's going on. This is like kind of messed up. He literally would have to like give a piece back in this position with bishop f6, rook takes c7. But I guess it's like a mop up operation, like you just lose too much other stuff. Black's bishop pair is very strong at the end of the day in a sort of variation. White is losing the thread though. He's coming on. He's coming undone. It looks like. White is having trouble finding a plan. I mean, this is typical what happens to people with white in the in the Philidor. A5, I'm not sure what that does. And now B5, in any way he wanted to play B5, Queen E2. So white is just getting... He's just getting pushed back. I mean, he lost the Queen on C4. His A5 pawn is now a liability. It looks like that's just going to like get lopped off at some point with like Bishop B4 and Queen takes A5. Black simply needs to be careful here. Something like King G7 would be my first choice. Friedman instead plays Bishop C5. I mean, this is like safety first, man. Let's get our king to a place where it's not on the diagonal and defend our H6 pawn, kind of sure everything up. I like this best. Bishop C5. That's kind of a weird move, to be perfectly frank. Um, maybe he wanted to transfer his queen over here. Bishop c5, apparently, it's just like a move without a plan. Just blindly putting the bishop on a, on a diagonal, okay. Queen d2, and then king g7, and queen d7. So we've got a position where it's just like bishop pair um, seems like very strong. Although the bishop on b7 is, is limited, it doesn't mean it has to be forever. So actually, Proven played pretty well. Queen takes d7, and then bishop c8, obviously, was his plan, and he missed this tricky trick. Wow, dude. So move 11 tricked him. The proofster did not see far enough. He missed knight takes e5. Very opportunistic tactic from move 11. This saves his proverbial butt. Wow. 
Goodman, not happy anymore. Whoops, we don't really want to lose two pieces for a rook. <laughs> Suddenly, it's not so clear. This is entertaining. And I guess this move disturbed us so much that he blundered now with knight f6. And move 11 had a move. Rook c7. It's not easy to find that. The point must be rook 7 bishop d6, rook takes f7 check. Rook c7, bishop d6, rook takes f7 check. When knight takes f7 is now with tempo in this variation. So it makes it makes a kind of key difference. Maybe you can rescue your knight, it's not going to get trapped or whatever. After rook takes f7, knight takes f7. The key being that that bishop is under attack on d6. But okay, I imagine that the players were in time pressure by now. Um, he could have played queen b8. Yeah, I saw that the engine pointed that out, move 11. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not an easy move to find. It, it does look kind of scary, you've got to admit. You know, Acerbate, of course, would be following up with, with rook a7. I've got the crazy lag, guys. Again, I apologize. Rook a7, Acerbate style, defending laterally on the 7th rank is probably the follow-up plan. Um... Not an easy move to find, especially if you're in time pressure. Um, but, okay. The actual game continuation was a trade of queens and then bishop c8. And the poor guy just missed knight takes e5, which keeps white in the game. Knight played knight f6. So bishop takes d7, knight takes d7 leads to an interesting position where he gives back the exchange here. And I guess... At the end of the day, black's not so bad because this knight kind of sucks. The knight on c3 sucks, um, and the pawn on a5 is kind of weak, so probably it's not that bad for black, even though he's down a pawn. Opposite color bishops. Instead, move 11 played here. Black got some threats with knight g4, but just trades pieces. Knight takes g4, bishop takes g4. Um, king f1. So at the end of the day, white is up a pawn, but this pawn is really bad, the pawn on a5. You can almost write it off, you know, I think that that pawn on a5, you're not going to be able to keep your rook on a1 for eternity um, to protect the pawn on a5. So the bishop pair, the weak pawn on a5, I think the Pribben has compensation. King f1 looks reasonable, and then rook on a to e8, and then reluctantly... It's like reluctantly f3 bishop c8 the dude is still a fide master even if I don't like him um, bishop c8 bishop b3 he's a credible player not incredible but credible bishop b3 so this was too creepy crawly black has f5 coming at you man what do you do though I mean this is harder to play for white than for black even though you're up a pawn. The bishop pair is really scary. Black has a better king. I'm going to take black here. If I have to choose. Even though the engine says it's equal. It's easier to play this position for black. With the initiative. You have to play, I guess, knight e2. And try to, try to recirculate the bad knight. Like boing boing and a rouser type of theme. You could also try to play c3. And maybe even support your pawn on, on b4. So that makes sense. <clears throat> so let's see what happens. Uh, bishop c8, bishop e3, f5, naturally. Kind of scary now for white. Actually, both of these pawns look look like targets. And then move 11 takes an f5. I'm terrified to open that file. Are you sure that's a good idea? Do we have to play? I guess eventually black's threatening b4. But black's also just threatening to take on e4, so we have to do something. Maybe there's no choice. I mean, rookie one looks truly awful. I don't like the way this is looking. Can we play rookie one? No, then black's just pushing with b4. Looks like we're coming apart, that we have to take this. 
Now the bishops are just shredding. Maybe we can withstand it. Bishop takes f5, we're just totally passive. You played rook d2. I don't know if it's better to play rook d2 or rook d1 here. You're on the verge of just getting mated by like some kind of perverse bishop h3. So I guess rook d2 actually defends better. And this this is, uh, that's, that's an idea, you know, you might run into. Playing white would definitely be annoying at this point. This is not fun anymore. You need to trade something. And Friedman just went pawn hunting. That might give us the time we need to somehow save our butt. Rook e1, at the very least. You played rook a d1, but I don't know where you're going with rook a d1. I mean, where are you going with this? You're going nowhere. I mean, why not play like rook e1? And then on bishop takes h4, we can trade a set of rooks. Maybe try to trade all the rooks. The sad reality is that we're probably losing the end game after we drop the h pawn and the a pawn. Fridman will like grind us down with five against four and two bishops versus bishop and knight. I mean, the writing is on the wall here, you know. Computer says you still have knight e2. My choice would have been rook e1. Bishop takes h4, and the engine says you're still all right there. Rook e1, bishop takes h4, rook takes e8, rook takes e8, and it's some weird move g4. Carving out a square for your pieces on e4. I don't like rook d1. I don't know what you're doing there. This was a serious mistake. You got nowhere to go. There's no entry point along the whole files. You know, along the file, there's nowhere to go. You just got to simply trade pieces, man, and try to re reduce his initiative. You, did, you didn't accomplish that here. I guess he might have been looking for some tricks. Okay, there is an entry point with rook d6. You got that. This is a blunder according to the engine. You need to trade some pieces, man. He's got a very strong initiative. Rook e2 probably, right? At least play this. Try to trade one set of pieces. It will reduce his attacking chances significantly if you can do that. You know, now we're looking at a pawn down ending when the a5 pawn drops probably. Um, but still you're in the game here. If you just trade one set of rooks. I mean, there's there's a time when trading pieces is like you know, it makes you a wimp, but there are certain situations like this where the other guy has an initiative and you need to just try to trade pieces to save your own life, you know. Um, C5, finally he gives up the white squares. Kind of a weird move. And then bishop d5, you lose a pawn. Yeah, what could you do? It's a not an easy position, though. Especially, I'm sure White was in time pressure here. This is really ugly. I think the pivotal moment was, again, trading a set of rooks. Try to get yourself in a position where you could even bring your king out into the, into the center. If you could trade one set of rooks, maybe. Um, but not trading pieces, you left yourself like a, a human target here. Um, all of his pieces are just aiming at your king. And then the coordination... That pawn drops, b4. You can't play knight e4. White resigned here. Well, I guess this bishop d3 is on. There's no knight e2. It's very bad. Okay, move 11. So, instructive game. We've got another game from Yabatis that was submitted. Only 8.30, guys, so we still have a little bit of time left. You have a nice 80 move game to analyze. Just send me the first 30 moves. Um, Yabatis. Okay, annotations are all me. I would request no engine on this game. Anyway, my computer, my internet, and my Firefox are combining to make my stream problematic, so we're going to turn off the engine anyway. Um, wait a minute. What did you say for which game? Move 11. It's cool that it says Sparkle Horse is streaming in the in the study here. Did it always do that? You're welcome, Move 11. I thought that was a very enlightening battle. Um, I know you haven't had too many Philidors. Let me close this. Um, so, Yabatis, did you specify which game you want to go over here? Okay. Number three.
All right, Yabatis was white, I suppose. He likes the English. It's a botanic. King's Indian, interesting. King's Indian. This is very, very standard. I actually had a game like this against Mika Bratain. Fide Master, a strong Fide Master from New England a couple of years ago. Maybe the same exact position. Let's see. You get those guys who play the King's Indian, and they're going to do this King's Indian setup no matter what. Um, but that's not a game, you know, not a game to take too hard. Move 11, I think that was a lot to be learned from that loss. Um, so, let's see. This is the game he could not find. Where is my computer? Let me turn off the engine. I like the way that Black played this. Essentially, um... King's Indian attack type of formation against the Botvinnik system. I've also seen and experimented myself with delaying e5. So he could do like d6, a6, um, that type of thing without e5 right away. If he knows you're going to play this type of setup. So I think that would be my preference to not necessarily even play the immediate e5. You could go like d6, castles, a6, b5. Toy around with that. But nevertheless, this is fine. Here, 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 here. Yeah. And I think that Mika Bratain played this against me. But I might have been a tempo down because, um, how would I do that now? Why would I be a tempo down? Yeah, I had this weird habit of playing e3 and then, uh, and then playing e3 and then, and then when they play c6, playing e4, a tempo down. I can't remember if I did that against him to literally induce black to play c6 and then play e4 after e3 and e4. So I don't remember. We had a draw in this setup, but it's unclear if I was a tempo down or not. Um, it's an interesting debate now. You bought a split f4. It's an extremely aggressive move. You have to calculate queen b6 check, king h1 and knight g4. I think I might have even had this with black once. A similar position where my opponent played f4 too early. Queen b6 check this move may be a problem because you didn't play the prophylactic h3 I mean this this all hinges on on queen b6 check king h1 knight g4 and there's some games here where Gunina was black she's the only real player um, two wins for white after f5 holy cow So Jovanovic, before he... Who is this Jovanovic? There must be more than one Jovanovic. I thought the guy was a GM. The same name, like Jovan Jovanovic. Zoran Jovanovic. Must be mixing up, mixing up my... Mixing up my... Uh, players from south of the border. Um, I live in Hungary. It's a joke. They're from Serbia or Croatia. Queenie won. Um interesting position this seems to be critical white has got the wedge in with f5 but at the cost of weakening his dark squares here so knight e3 obviously and white managed to win two games ouch knight a4 knight takes g2 i guess that's forced and now king takes g2 is there another move for black Someone played f6 here. Whoa. That's another approach. Now bishop h6 protecting that guy. And then h3. This is kind of weird. And now knight c2. Queen d1. Knight e3. Okay, this is just bizarre. I mean, queen b3. And white 1. A 2500 named Illusionok. Is this from 2018? I mean, I'm not allowed to use the engine. <laughs> what is going on around here? This is a recent game. 2018 2500, bishop g5 was played. Queen takes b6, a takes b6, rook b1. h6, h4, whoops. Knight takes f1, h takes g5, 
and he takes g3. So I don't know how much of this was forced, but I don't like the resulting position for black. Looks like black is worse, significantly worse here. But maybe it's not over. I'm going to peek at the engine analysis. White is like clearly better. Okay. That confers basically my, confirms my opinion. Um, a lot of questions there and not so many answers. It's very, very murky. I mean, my basic premise is that F4 is risky. You probably have to calculate all this stuff out and see if it's actually sound or not. If it's not sound, then you simply have to play H3 next game. If F4 turns out to be sound, it's sound. Um, so F4, but this guy who's like 2,500 is willing to play it. Maybe it works. And I always thought that Bishop B6 was kind of artificial. Um, perhaps this is like a... Another move is Queen D7. This has a good score. Whoa, whole bunch of games. Cyborowski versus Rasik. I suppose you could play Queen C8 as well as Queen D7. Bilek versus Vadaj Laszlo from 1971. Is that awesome or what? They're from the same generation, Hungarian grandmasters, hypermodern specialists. So, all right, f4, risky. Black plays queen b6, check. King h1, knight g4, and now queen e1. So f5 is apparently the, the critical move. Queen e1 is uh, second best, and you're following the Gunina game. What you know, most people will miss is the knight knight e three knight a four motif. This is our game. But white didn't play knight a four. Does this transpose? No, it's not the same as the other game. So here, here, here. I guess that's forced, right? And then you've got to move the queen somewhere. Like let's just say. You could put it on a6, maybe. Then f5 is strong. No, f5 is going to be strong anyway. Where am I supposed to put the queen? It looks kind of problematic for black, actually. At the end of the day, the f4, f6 idea, like the other guy had. Maybe the space outweighs. And giving up the dark, the white squared bishop is not such a big deal for white. You know, the position is still rather closed. That's his bad bishop, technically. f5. And I guess white has the upper hand here at the end of the day. So um, <clears throat> what happened at the uh, in the actual game was was that, uh, Yobatis took on e3. And uh, this is a different approach. But the queen does seem kind of slightly annoying on e3. But we play rook f3. Well, this is also OK. And we play f5. Similar to the other variation. Our knight's not out on a4, but we do have a rook on a semi-weird square here on f3. That might actually work out though. Maybe we can, we can go there. But the difference is kind of significant. When you go back at the end of the day, you bought us, um, I think we have to really think about the difference here. You're trading this bishop instead of this bishop. What about queen a6 instead of queen c7? I don't I think it makes a huge difference, JCS. I think that white's just better in another variation where he's playing a uh, He's just, honestly, I mean, I think that everyone, thank you for, for tuning into the stream, by the way. Uh, we're doing some game analysis with subscribers. But um, I think that, that that variation, where did we have that? Darn it, here. F5. Um, let's say queen a6 instead of whatever. We're going to sack a piece here or something? You're not seriously considering that, are you? That's not going to work. I mean, this isn't going to... You got something crazy for me with like b5? Not, I mean, that was one of my ideas with queen a6. I just didn't really believe it would be possible. Um, queen a6 may be better than queen c7, very likely. But I still don't know if it quite, you know, is going to be enough, ultimately. Knight c3 or something like that. Bishop d7. And... White seems to be better. I mean, you've got the f6 type of ideas. 
that's that's a, that's maybe that's maybe game you know in fact today tobias was talking to me about um where he killed or showing me a game where he killed another piece i mean when that happens that may just be the end of the game thematically if we get an f6 kill that knight knight on a4 is hanging oh my god i just thought my queen was on d1 like it's chess 960 hold on a second all right so queen a6 hits the knight it's hanging i didn't even think about it so thank you for pointing that out um this is rather important queen a6 the knight is hanging yo that makes a huge difference doesn't it now we have to take time to go back and then black can play like f5 or something so this is very relevant so this position hasn't arisen but why we have no games here knight g4 oh so this guy's move with f5 is is best f5 bishop d7 queen e1 and then queen e1 see this is very important tobias so that seems to be extremely important knight e3 and then f6 is is the guy the 2500 guy jovanovich played this black took on g2 king takes g2 and then black played queen d8 but he should in fact play queen a6 in this position though it's still too late though it doesn't matter well it's it's a little better because here we can play like f6 probably and black can although i don't really like black's position he might be able to he might be able to hang on somehow so it actually looks pretty good for white but i think that bishop takes e3 um is the less less good exchange this bishop on g2 um was the one we'd rather give up queen takes e3 rook f3 queen b6 the end of the day though it may not matter i guess white's just like well the bishop can come out here that's that that matters that matters so he plays queen d queen d2 black played knight d7 and now g4 but it's just unpleasant for black it may not be lost the other option is of course rook f1 um i mean i suppose he could have played f6 if he if he's so inclined it's a little ugly but without the dark square bishop here um, I think there's there's some good attacking chances. <laughs> Asabe with the panda emotes. He's calling the panda. One last. One last, show. Asabe, what's up, man? Don't forget, H4 is better than H5 is better than G5. Don't be like a nod, and move your G pawn. All right, less weaknesses, but um. Okay, let's see what happened. G4, knight f6, uh-oh. Well, I talked about this with Dvoretsky. One of the few things we went over with Mark was uh, was King's Indian attack against the, against the Sicilian. And this is a reverse of that. Um, he, he and I actually looked at positions where you smush the bishop with like f6 and, and that's it, you know. If he can come back to f8, he's still alive. But if he has to go back to h8, then you can resign. I mean, basically, it's strategically lost. So, g4, knight f6, g5, knight h5, f6, black is, black is lost. I think it's just lost. He literally will have to sack a piece on f6. Um, he'll literally have to sack a piece on f6 for like two pawns at the best. Best case scenario, bring this back here to d8 and try to sack a knight for like two pawns so he's not down a piece for the rest of his existence. But that's not supposed to happen. So this was pretty brutal. Um, whoops, what happened? Okay, I don't understand the next move. White just voluntarily sacked an exchange. But that doesn't seem necessary. Why would you sack the exchange here? You can just play rook f2. No need to be so generous. I would think. 
White should be winning strategically. Why is White doing this? He had an idea, but it seems a little over the top. I thought he was going to take with the bishop, you know, try to take here. And that was his justification. This is very, very weird. Unnecessary exchange sacrifice. Rook takes. And I know that black's down a piece there. So even after signing the exchange, maybe white is still better. But it feels very unnecessary to me. H6. Um, H4. Queen C7. Bishop H3. Yeah, this is a logical try. Really try to open it up and, and bust out with d5, e d5, e d5, and now knight e3, and whoops, there's a d5 square. That's going to be a problem. It's a good thing black played h6, so knight e7 isn't mate. Takes, takes, oh, right in there. Okay. Still, there's no immediate blow. White has to be a little bit careful here. He's not giving away too much material. Queen c5 looks looks okay. He decided to play queen d6, but I I don't quite understand why why d6 rather than c5, because I want to take this pawn if I can get it. We can take the pawn, we can go across here, maybe cause some problems. Queen d6 looks passive. You just let him take back. You know, why, why not this? I know there's a check, but we have king h7. A nice little cubby hole there, and I don't see the next check. It's not like the position is going to win itself. It's actually kind of difficult to break through. Probably that should mean I should not give the exchange. Yeah. I don't see any reason to be so generous with your material. King h7, bishop g4, and that looks kind of nasty. Because now we have a problem. There's going to be real issues about the king's safety here. Maybe black should try like e4 or something. He does. e4. I don't know what the best square is for the rook. You gotta stay on the third rank to stop knight check. I guess rook c3 is okay. This move, I don't know what this does. I have no clue what that does. Is there a useful move for black? Um, well, what if he sacks a piece now? You know, seriously. I mean, no time like the present. Let's, uh, let's just, like, take this. No? Oh, no, we lose a queen. Never mind. No, that's another reason why queen d6 isn't so good. Not so easy to get out of this. Some sort of desperate e3 sacrifice. Maybe rook a e8 plays this one, and then obviously bishop takes h5, g takes h5, this is a dubious, bishop takes h5, it was premature, I'm not sure, I mean it looks very natural, but you don't have an immediate follow up, it's okay, you could probably maintain the tension, something like queen e3, I mean I think that black has to, he has to play like rook e8 and protect his pawn on e4. Because if you take on h5, then play queen takes e4, it's it's nearly mate. I suggested <clears throat> queen c5, um, but if d takes c4... I mean, don't we have queen takes c4 here? Isn't this a problem? I mean, I don't really see what we've got with white, you know? It looks like some serious problems here. We're coming undone. I, I don't know what to suggest after queen c5. We've got to play knight e7 check, and then king h7, and then find a move of some sort. Perhaps there's still good chances here for white, but I don't see anything immediate. It's, it's annoyingly difficult to do anything to black king in this position. So he may well be okay. Um, but bishop takes h5 was, was probably premature. Could have set it up better. And now knight to d4. But I want to just I want to just attack this pawn with check. Objectively, 
I don't think that white is in danger of losing here. I guess it's a question of whether black can save save himself from losing. Because we have two knights against uh, a rook. Essentially, this bishop is not on the board. Even though black is up material, white is effectively up material. And now queen e3. I think that was that was the move we suggested before, where would have blockaded and threatened the e4 pawn. This rook is problematic. White is on the verge of coming completely undone here. Losing g5 is going to be a catastrophe, I would think. Suddenly black has threats. And that will undermine the f6 pawn, and ultimately the black bishop will get out. It looks like he's coming undone. Rook b3, b6. Okay. Do we have knight f3? Then, then queen f5, I presume. This is very problematic. Knight here, you're hitting a rook. And therefore, queen takes g5 is impossible. Oh, that's an unpleasant surprise. So why the heck did this guy play b6? Oh my gosh. So he can play like takes on g5 with something? And let you take on b7? I mean, obviously this is a huge threat. Or he could maybe play rook d7? I guess this is this is a nasty shot now. Queen h3 with mate and, and a hit on the rook on d7. So this position is not so easy to handle for both sides. Let's try taking on g5. No, you... Yeah, let's try this. Queen takes g5, what do you do? Queen takes g5. Rook takes g5. Rook takes b7. My gut instinct is that black is surviving here. And maybe even doing well. Yeah, he's winning according to the engine. Sacking the exchange back with rook on g takes d5. Wow, I didn't even think he was winning, but he's like winning. That's amazing. So after rook b3, um, I cheated looking at the engine. I couldn't resist. I had to know, you know, what was really going on here. Black's actually winning. Wow. Wait, is coming apart. But b6 is a terrible mistake. Suddenly we have chances. This is a nice move, knight c6. Queen f5. Fine. There's a queen f1 check, but that alone doesn't do anything. <clears throat> Knight d e7, like self mate. I mean, one would assume you could just take the rook in this position, though. You could simply take his rook, and the position is. Well, maybe black is better, I guess, but that bishop on h8, nothing is sure. Um, your king is very open as well. This is obviously a strong move. And, and better than the game. But this one just like massive blunder, allowing rook d1 check, and now white is like basically getting mated. Queen g4. Is this a problem? This is a problem here. Oh man, there's another one. That's it. So that all fell apart, unfortunately, for Yubatis. But um, if I may turn on the engine now that we're done, I'm curious if you hadn't played the last blunder, what the evaluation is here. So you can, in fact, take this, and, and it's okay. And you can also play your move, which is more adventurous, 9 of CD7. Yeah, I, I guess I vote for a, uh, I vote for taking the rook, on d8. Um, 
Take the rook on d8. Okay, it's not 100% clear. This is a tense position. Your king is not safe, um, but it's still not 100% clear who's better. Your rook is really the problem. I never should have ended up on b3. That piece was misplayed. Um, yeah, this was actually a really interesting struggle. Uh, black wins in the end. White made a very unfortunate blunder with knight, knight e7, but it looks like it was back and forth, and uh, either side could have won. So I think that'll wrap it up for today, guys. That we're gonna close down the stream at nine o'clock. Um, we got through all the subscriber stream uh, games. I'm sorry we couldn't do more. International Master William Pascal with the Panda. Don't forget uh, tomorrow is our Friday Fast Friday. Fast Friday Blitz tomorrow. Five plus three, only time control. We're gonna do five plus three casual, 10 a.m. CEST Central European Time here on LeeChess.org. Thank you everybody for submitting your games and thanks everybody for subscribing. So it's great having you guys as guests here and subscribers on my stream. I'd like to um, just say like the games were really interesting today. The, the time just went by. I couldn't even you know tell it was like two and a half hours. Thanks Merle Dixon for the donation and to Dim also. I had 100 bits today. Uh, please support the stream and subscribe. We need all the support we can to keep the stream going. Again, tomorrow is Friday, so we're going to do Fast Friday, 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, two and a half hour stream with uh, casual blitz chess here. Not only with subscribers, everybody that comes along with 100 uh, rated games or more uh, established ratings we're going to be playing tomorrow. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks to Soltigo. I don't know if he was here today, but we, we give our best wishes to Soltigo. He's been feeling kind of bad. Um, hopefully he'll, he'll be pulling out of it and feeling better in the near future. I know he's going to be cutting back a little bit on streaming and moderating so put Soltigo in your thoughts hopefully he'll he'll be back with us eventually and uh, and thanks everybody for watching and subscribing for myself and the Ponda thanks again guys and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. bye bye